Hey, Primary 6 Math Prodigies, this is Coach Saiful with your daily dose of math mastery and today we're going to go into question number 4 of your assessment paper number 13. Now this question is um, pretty simple, but I don't know why some of you are finding it very difficult. Okay, I think it's because you all don't understand what is happening. So let me try to explain this in a, in a better way, okay? So first of all, let's read the question. It says there were some 50 cent coins and 1 dollar coins in a coin bank. Okay, I don't know what a coin bank is. Some of you said that it's actually a... Um, a tabong, <laughs> a tabong in other words, a piggy bank. But I don't know, I think it's a real bank, I don't know, I'm not too sure. But anyway, um, 12 50 cent coins were taken out and exchanged for one dollar coins and were then put back into the coin bank. The ratio of 50 cent coins to one dollar coins was 7 is to 4. If all the coins in the coin bank add up to 75 dollars, what was the ratio of the number of 50 cent coins to the number of one dollar coins at first. Okay, so here it is. There were some 50 cent, uh, 50 cent coins and one dollar coins. So first of all, we're gonna do that. We're gonna write down, okay, so there were 50 cent coins and there were one dollar coins. And 12 50 cent coins were taken out in exchange for one dollar coins and were put back into the coin bank. In other words, um, uh, they take out 12. So that means uh, we take out 12, this minus 12. Then we plus how many? 12 times 50 cents will give you what? Um, six dollars. Therefore, we plus six, and this will put into the bank. Then what happened? After doing that, the ratio of 50 cent coins to one dollar coins was seven is to four. So after doing that, the ratio was seven is to four. You get what I mean? So basically, after taking out the 12 coins and putting in uh, six one dollar coins, uh, the ratio of 50 cent coins to one dollar coins was seven is to four. If all the coins in the coin bank add up to 75 dollars, Okay, this is the tricky part. The value, not the number of coins, is equal to $75. Okay, value. Now, here's the thing about value and the number of it. For example, one 50 cent coin will give you how much? Okay, 50 cents. But the value is only 50 cents. But one $1 coin will give you what? $1. Therefore, the value is actually higher in terms of $1 than 50 cents. That's the first thing you understand. So, for example, let's say to you if... Um, I have four 50 cent coins. How many 50 cent coins do I have? I have four. But what is the value of the 50 cent coins? It's two dollars. But at the same time, I tell you, it's, I have four one dollar coins. What is the value of my money? It's actually four dollars, which means that it's double. So the value is different from the number. Okay, and that's why uh, it's very important to understand this because the next part is very critical. Okay, the next part is important. What you need to understand is, uh, is that one dollar coins have the value of twice the 50 cent coins. So actually, what you can actually write is for the ratio of the value of 50 cent coins to one dollar coins, actually seven is to eight. Why? Because I times two. Because every one dollar coin is equal to two 50 cent coins. Now from here, it becomes very simple. This is $75, the value. Therefore, seven plus eight, it gives you 15 units equals to $75. If $75 is equal to 15 units, can we find out what's one unit? Yes, we can. But what's the question asking for? The question is asking for the ratio of the number of 50 cent coins to the number of $1 coins at first. Okay, so at first. So we find that out. We find out what seven units first. Seven units will give us the number of uh, 50 cent coins. And in this case, it's 75 divided by 15 to find out one unit. And then we times how many? We times seven. So 75 divided by 15 will give you how many? It will give you 5. Am I right? 4 times 15 gives me 60, plus 15 is 75. So therefore, it's 6. 7 times 6 will give you 42. Got it? 42. And what is 8 units? Therefore, 8 units is equal to, same thing, 75 divided by 15 times 8. Okay? What is um, 6 times 8? 48. But this is the value of the coins, forty-eight dollars, and this is forty. In this case, um, this is forty-eight dollars, and this is forty-two dollars. Okay, but what is the number of coins? The number of coins is actually divided by two. Got it? Because it's actually fifty cent coins. So the value of the coins actually, as a number of coins actually, twenty-four. So let's check if there are. Sorry. Uh, Hold on a second. Okay, so I'm right. So here is $48, right? So if $48, how many coins do we have? 
we have 48 one dollar coins because 48 times one gives us 48 dollars but how many 42 dollars coins uh, how many uh, 50 cent coins do we have we actually have how many can you can you figure it out 42 divided by 50 cents so 42 divided by 0 0.5 and that will give us a number of coins which is 84 so in other words there are 84 uh, 50 cent coins and there are 48 one dollar coins you got it so therefore in this case what happens is we have the number of coins after we have plus 6 and minus 12 okay that means at the start how many were there at the start there were okay this is getting very messy at the start there were how many there was actually 84 plus 12 so at the start there was 96 and at the start there was 48 minus 6 which gives us 42 so for now our job is just to reduce the um, reduce the ratio. So we'll do it slowly. 96 divided by 42. Okay, yes, erase everything, huh? Can I erase everything? Okay, I just erase this part then. Okay. So the ratio we found out is 96 to 42. Now we can just simply reduce it. 96 to 42, we reduce it to divide by what? You can divide by 2 first, then we get 45, 48 here. Then here we'll get how many? Here we'll get, uh, divide by 2, we get 21. Can we divide by 2 again? No, we can't. Can we divide by 3? Yes, we can. We'll get 16. Therefore, divide by 3, we get 7. So the answer is 16 is to 7. So the original ratio was 16 is to 7. Okay, again, like I said, don't get confused because this is value. Value. Okay, therefore the value is double. That's why we, that's why we make it into 8 instead of 7. Alright, if you got that one right, high five to you because you are a math prodigy. Good job. And uh, that brings me to the quote of the week. And the quote of the week is, emotions can be your greatest allies in life, but too much of them will destroy you. So don't have too much. You know, um, you know some people who actually love to write down their emotions on uh, Facebook, or on Friendster, or whatever you like, and on Twitter, or whatever, you know. And they like to put their emotions like, oh, I hate this guy, you know, he's tried to do this to me, blah, 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 whatever it is. And um, that is actually a sign of emotional weakness. Okay, so if you are doing that, I don't want you to do that anymore. Why? Because it really is a bad thing. It means uh, you actually make yourself weaker to these emotions, and you will only end up eating. It will only end up eating you, because these emotions can really be very harmful uh, to your life. Okay, same thing in school. Same thing in life. If you get, uh, if you let math get to you, if you let the difficulty get to you, guess what? You're not going to improve and you won't uh, take action to improve it. And therefore, your results will be bad. But if you take it as a challenge, if you take it as a, uh, as a, something that you can work on, then things will be better. All right? So therefore, I say emotions can be your greatest enemies in life. With that, this is Coach Saiful signing off saying you are a math prodigy. Good job.